Hi everyone, I'm Melissa with Midnight Hour Oil. I wanted to come out today and share some of those dreams I told you I had been given. Uh, it was actually during the week of Passover, I realized I was given three uh, apocalyptic type dreams, things that I believe are going to be happening right before Jacob's trouble begins uh, and even during the tribulation. And I don't have dreams like this very often, uh, as I've shared in the past, the Lord typically gives me dreams about his church and the condition of the body of Christ. But uh, during the week of Passover, I was given three dreams that I believe are warnings concerning the things that are going to be coming on the earth very soon and even now are here. The, another weird thing was uh, my friend Rhonda, on at least two of these dreams, had been given a similar dream confirming one another. So the first dream was on April 7th. And in this dream, I was on my dad's ranch. And uh, in the one part of the dream, I saw these soldiers and they were getting ready to deploy and they were getting dressed. And I approached one of the soldiers to ask them where they were going, what they were doing. And I could see something strange going on with his eye. And he explained to me that they were going to go to war. Uh, and when they get there, they transform, shape shift, whatever you want to call it, into werewolves. And then he looked at me and said, it makes the war go faster. So when I contemplated that dream later, I believe the Lord was showing me these are transhumanism, AI type soldiers, and they're being used to fight our battles already. Uh, the U.S. probably worldwide. It's my understanding that governments across the globe are uh, doing things like this. And so it's just something to pray about, uh, it's something to be aware of. And uh, I just believe these are things that are going to be prevalent on the earth uh, after the church is removed, but they are already ramping up. And I was just kind of surprised to see that, that they were already being used to fight battles. Okay, so the second dream was, I think this was April 8th. I was in a group uh, of like survivors and I don't know what had happened, but we were just basically trying to survive. And this group was doing some kind of preparatory training because they knew something evil was coming, evil something, people, hybrid beings, and we needed to be able to defend ourselves. So I was doing like some mock training and these, I was in like a covered wagon and a couple of the guys uh, were coming toward me. Well, when they did, it was like the Holy Spirit came over me. And I basically began to warn them, do not touch me in the name of Jesus. I bound them from touching me. And then I said this, uh, you have been warned, do not touch the Lord's anointed. Do not do it. Do not do it. And I was saying it very loud. Uh, and I believe that that is uh, a warning for the enemy to not come against the Lord's people know that when we are born again, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. And if you look that up, that sealing is, it's to show the enemy that we belong to God. We belong to Jesus and basically cannot touch us. So I just believe that as long as we are here, if we rely on the power of the name of Jesus, if we uh, operate in that authority, that the enemy will not be able to come against us, but we have to know how to walk in that authority. But I'm not gonna go into that now. There's, uh, I have other teachings out on that, but that is very critical to understand our authority in, in Jesus' name in these days to come. All right, and the next part of that dream, I was shown some things, I'm not gonna get into detail about it, but the overall message of that was that people are gonna be shown what they're made of. The testing is going to be extremely difficult. When I contemplated that part of the dream, Revelation 3.10 came to mind where the Church of Philadelphia, Jesus was speaking to the angel of the Church of Philadelphia. 
uh, and saying that basically because that church had been uh, faithful to the Lord, that they would not have to go through the hour of trial that was coming on the whole earth. So we know there's a time of trial coming on the earth, and the faithful remnant will be spared from it, as the Lord told the angel of the Church of Philadelphia in Revelation 3.10. Okay, in the last part of that dream, I was in a safe place. I just knew that nothing from the outside going on, none of the storms could harm anyone inside. Uh, so I ended up opening like a great big, like it was a steel door or something, and to look out and see what was going on outside. Riley, you're not going to meow, are you? Okay, no meowing. Mama's doing a video. Okay, thank you. I just, I just took a shower. Don't need a bath. Come on, Riley. Okay. When I looked out the door, I saw the roads were flooded. They, it was. They were like raging rivers. It was just water everywhere. And then I looked up in the sky and I saw the moon and the moon was like right here, but the sun was right above the moon and it was like pitch black darkness. Now, I don't know if you, my cat is wanting some attention. I don't know if you saw about the, the cloud that appeared in Istanbul. Paul Begley was talking about this with Mike from around the world on his interview with Mike yesterday. And Mike was saying that this cloud just came out of nowhere. Okay, it wasn't a solar eclipse or anything like that. And I believe these are things that are going to be happening more and more. And in my dream, it looked exactly like that. There were uh, clouds kind of in front of the sun and the moon. But I knew the moon and sun were out of position. They just weren't where they should be. So I believe certain things are going to start happening more and more. Some darkness coming on the earth unexpectedly, unexplainably. All right, these are all things that we were warned of in the scriptures when Jesus prophesied that there would be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars. And uh, Joel prophesied, and uh, the book of Acts talks about in Acts 2.20, I think it is, and Joel chapter 2 talks about the sun will be darkened and the moon turned to blood. So we have these things that have already been prophesied beginning to unfold. And what did Jesus say when we start seeing these things happening? He said, when you start seeing these things happening, look up because your redemption is drawing near. Jesus is getting ready to appear. That is the sign that he is ready to come back and take his church off the earth. Then on April 10th, I had a dream it was dark and I was watching, I was observing as this water began rushing down a large mountain and I could hear the fallen angels talking and they were taking, they were taking pride in the fact that they had poisoned these waters and then they were redirecting them towards something like a, uh, I'm sorry something like a convenience store. And I knew that the objective was to poison mankind. And I looked and there were these people in this parking lot and they were trying to warn other people before the event took place. But I knew the event they were talking about was the rapture. And then I was in the parking lot and I was just praising God and I was thanking him that Jesus was coming back and that he was going to repair all the damage, all the destruction that the fallen angels had done to the earth. And as I pondered that dream, uh, this scripture came to mind uh, from Revelation eleven eighteen, and it says, the nations were angry and your wrath has come. The, tri the time has come for judging the dead and rewarding your servants, the prophets and your people who revere your name, both great and small and for destroying those who destroy the earth. And I got the sense that these fallen ones are responsible for a lot of the destruction that's going on in, in, this, in the earth right now. And it will only get worse during the time of Jacob's trouble. But uh, these are just warnings, I believe, that I was shown uh, not to cause fear, but just to pass along to you to make as a matter of prayer and to just as as many people as possible share these warnings share your faith uh, if the holy spirit leads you to to talk to somebody about jesus 
uh, as many as possible that we can snatch from the flames. We, that's where we our hearts need to be, church. I don't know if you saw the movie, The Jesus Revolution that came out, but my husband and I went and saw that, I don't know, when it first came out four weeks ago. During the Jesus Revolution, there was a sign, and that sign was this, okay? This was the sign for those who were a part of that revolution, pointing up to the Lord, all right? So if a basketball player or a football player scored, I mean, you know, a lot of them would do this if they were believers. And so in this dream I had after we saw that movie, I'm in like a, just a room with maybe 30 or 40 people. And this young man gets saved. He gives his life to the Lord and everybody's just so excited and, and focused on that this man got saved. And they seem just really, really super focused on that and not on the Lord. So I said to the people, I said, um, you know, let's something to the effect of let's, let's give glory to God to, to, and I pointed upward like this to Jesus. And this man stood up in the dream. He said, and people don't know what this means. And he said, this means just one more Lord, just one more. And I thought that was interesting that, uh, the, the focus was on drawing in more people now. And back then, when in, during the Jesus revolution, maybe it did just mean to look up to God, but I believe that the Lord wants us to focus on bringing in just one more, just one more before we're taken out of here, church. So let's pray for just one more. And, uh, and I hope, I pray you'll take all this to the Lord in prayer and just ask him for confirmations to show you things that, uh, that are coming that we maybe need to be better prepared for. Uh, but as always, church, it is my prayer that we will all continue to keep our lamps burning bright while we wait for Jesus. I love you all. God bless you.